Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And we are wrapping up Pride Month. It is towards the end of June. But of course, as you know, we will be celebrating and always celebrate the queer community all day, every day. So, you know, even though it's official by standards of the calendar and whatever, I guess, the U.S. deems. Is it international or just the U.S.? That doesn't in June, Pride Month. I believe it's... Um... It's, just, it's not international. I think several other countries do it, but it is not completely international. No. Okay. Yeah. So they do it in their own time. Because I also know, like, yeah, unfortunately, there's a split here in the U.S. as well, a different time. And we've talked about that previously. But going back to officially by calendar, by U.S. Uh, calendar holidays is wrapping up of Pride Month. I always go always a little bit off track. Uh, but this time we are uh, wrapping it up with a Native American activist, Charlie Amaya Scott. So Scott is an activist, educator, and scholar, and is someone who seeks to find joy and share it. I love that when we were researching them, they just talked about wanting to share their stories and bring joy. And I, of course, we are all down for that. Scott has been an outspoken advocate for the indigenous community, as well as a fierce activist for climate justice. On their site, DeneeAesthetics.com, they write, Born and raised within the Navajo Nation, Charlie Amaya Scott is dedicated to creating and sharing content that inspires joy and justice. They have worked with brand and organizations around climate justice, celebrating her culture and language, advocating and supporting movements that celebrate or affect Black and Indigenous queer and trans peoples, and sharing knowledge around Indigenous Indigenous people's gender and sexuality, decolonization, higher education, representation, and more. They are a trans activist as well, and they go by they, them, she, her. So there may be some interchanging here, but yes, yeah, so that's yeah, that is their preference, and we honor that. Yes, yes. And they are currently working on their PhD at the University of Denver. And according to their site, quote, Charlie is also a doctoral candidate who is intrigued by the intricacies among higher education settler colonialism, and social media. Their scholarship and writings are imbued with a desire for a more just and liberating education that supports, inspires, and celebrates the next generation of queer, trans, and indigenous students. And to expand on that, they told blogger Cassandra Bankson, quote, my area of study is similar to what I post online. It's celebrating and advocating for Black, Brown, and Indigenous peoples, particularly those who are queer and trans. I'm trying to address things like rainbow capitalism, cultural appropriation, misrepresentation, and college access. In celebration of Pride Month, I've been focusing a lot more on queer and trans folk and the marginalization that they experience both within and outside different Native nations. To empower and educate others, I talk about my experiences as a queer trans femme and how they have influenced my life. Right. And as they mentioned, uh, Charlie has had a big impact within the social media platforms, talking about their work and how to address the ideas of colonization and decolonization. In an interview with IndieKids.org, which are interviews with younger kids, like the interviewer here was is a 10-year-old uh, named Nikki. So I was like, cool, cool. I love this mm-hmm. idea. And by the way, the questions were really, really deep. And I was like, oh, I need lessons from her. (laughs) Um, They say, I speak on a lot of issues on social media like climate justice or justice within education. I try to encourage other Native youth who want to go to college and advocate on their behalf with professors or staff of a college. I want these people to understand that the way that Native people interact and move through this world might be a little bit different and they might need more support. I also speak a lot about gender and sexuality and about how the Navajo Nation does not support trans people. And I try to explain to people that the reason for this is not necessarily our fault and that and there are reasons why they don't support trans people. But that doesn't mean they can't change and do better. Decolonization to me means celebrating, centering, uplifting the dreams, desires and demands of queer and trans indigenous people. And I say queer and trans indigenous people because those particular relatives of mine were targeted by colonialism in a way that's different from those who were straight or cis indigenous people. And with that, Charlie often talks about the importance of storytelling in order to decolonize. In an article they wrote in Yes Magazine titled Digital Native Storytelling, they write, 
The scale of social media's impact surprises me, especially considering that it sits in the palm of my hand. It is a thread connecting us to so many across the world. Over the past decade, there has been an expansion and evolution of social media that has changed the lives of people, both in how we build and maintain relationships and how we share and produce knowledge. It has created a culture all its own. One of the most significant impacts I have experienced is how Indigenous people have embraced the art of storytelling online. Right. And they continue. Uh, Storytelling is more than just recounting events. There is an inherent art and skill to one of the oldest and most widely practiced forms of communication and cultural preservation in human history. Indigenous storytellers are inspired by and pull from what I lovingly describe as the sentient archive, a living, breathing repository of memories, lessons, and knowledge built and shared from generation to generation. There is an inheritance formed through the kinship of sharing a story, imparting strength, beauty, and wisdom that transcend temporal and spatial dimensions. Our storytelling enables us to define who we were, who we are, and who we will be as Indigenous peoples. As an Indigenous trans femme, who I am, who I was, and who I will be exists because of my family, my community, and the people I choose to be in relationship with, as well as what I learn, embrace, and refuse in this life. My use of social media is informed and grounded by Dene ways of being and knowing, which I have inherited from and cultivated with my family and community. Through online platforms, I have been able to reclaim what was long denied to me, my story. Social media enabled me to create new and complex representations of what it means to be Indigenous, along with fresh forms of queerness and transness that exist in alignment with my indigeneity. And with that, they have continued their activism, all the while sharing their joy and stories with so many. And in the series In the Know by Yahoo, Charlie talks about not only being inspirational, but being inspired as well. They say, one of the things that I'm most proud of is being able to be a representation and a presence and someone who inspires thousands of people every single day. I think that what I'm hoping to change in the world is how people see and understand indigenous peoples. For so long, we are seen as savages and uncivilized. But being able to tell them, being able to show them that we are so much more and that we are brilliant and that we're beautiful, I think there's a lot of changing how they see us and how they understand us and how they witness us. The queer community inspires me to have a little bit of fun every day. The indigenous community reminds me of where I come from and who I'm representing. And the trans community reminds me that you decide who you want to be, not anyone else. Uh, yeah, and to end, we wanted to read a bit more from them. Here's some uh, more from the Yes magazine titled Beyond the Binary, Retelling the Dene Creation Story. And it's just an excerpt past the creation story where they speak about themselves. Uh, my entire life, I was taught by my family and my community to value and celebrate our language and culture. But what of the Dene history that is queer and trans? The one I know existed before it was silenced and erased. I read the translated version of my stories and they feel so wrong. Although I'm not fluid in my language and my body remembers in its own way, there is a rhythm that beats across my homeland. It is soft, but it is there, waiting for me to dance along. There is a humming in the air and a synergy waiting to be caressed. And it starts with a retelling of these stories and a celebration of my body, my trans feminine Dene body. Like first woman and first man, I too was made from the ears of corn mixed and mingled among its variations, made and shaped by their hands in the divine. The wind breathed life into me as it did for my mother and her mother and those who came before, and as it will do for those after my body returns to the earth. My choice was stolen from me, but not anymore. I have spent years learning and unlearning what it means to be Dene and to be queer and to be trans in this world. This world that denied me first woman's gift. Now I am reclaiming this gift. I know who I am and with this knowledge, with the ceremony of transformation, I am regaining my power of creation, starting with myself and our stories until finally there's a world that celebrates people like me. So you can definitely find more and more of their writing within Yes uh, magazine. I know they are a part of that, as well as so much more, as well as their own site, DeneeAesthetics.com. And you can find them under that in uh, social media. I believe I already follow them in TikTok. I was like, this person looks really familiar. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So really beautiful poetry, essentially, in their writing and what they're doing and the joy they're finding even in times of oppression. So, yeah. 
Let's celebrate everyone and their <laughs> uniqueness. And certainly, listeners, go um, check Charlie out if you haven't already. And if you have any suggestions, as always, we would love to hear from you. You can email us at stuffmediamomstuff at iheartmedia.com. I believe we have. We're test driving a new email address, Ooh. which is hello at stuffmomnevertoldyou.com. If you want to try that one. Oh, it's simpler. Hello at what? Hello at stuffmomnevertoldyou.com. Ooh. Yes, uh, because years ago, <laughs> we tried to change the email address because a lot of people complained about it. Right. Being complicated. So. Yes. It was not a choice that we made. <laughs> we um, did not do it. <laughs> but slowly but surely, we're we're working towards that. Uh, so if you want to try that one out, uh, all, all the email will get to us uh, eventually. <laughs> so two options for you there. You can find us on Twitter at MomStuffPodcast or on Instagram and TikTok at Stuff Never Told You. We're also on YouTube. We have a tea Public store and we have a book you can get wherever you get your books. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christina, our executive producer, Maya, and our contributor, Joey. Thank you. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, you can check out the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 